having us. And um, I hope everybody had a wonderful day for the people that had um, went to the convention. The convention was definitely life changing. Um, it was a lot of information. So if you have any mentors or anything like that that went to the convention and you weren't able to make it, definitely reach out to them, ask them questions like what they've taken from the convention to actually excel their business um, and actually push their business. So we're actually going to start off with uh, four people last week that actually was able to make their first sale. Uh, we got Jarrell in. Congratulations, Jarell, on making your first sale. This is definitely not going to be your last. And we have another one, uh, Miss Benia. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Benia, congratulations on your first sale. And I also want to give a Josh. Josh actually got his first sale. Congratulations, Josh, on getting your first sale and actually closing one today as well. And Osmond, congratulations on getting your first sale. For everyone that had their first sale, I know everyone's excited to make money, but we have to start looking at the bigger picture. You actually protected your first family. So with that being said, just keep going out to every house that you go into and just really want to go solve a problem. Because when I, when I actually got my first sale, yeah, I was really excited about making money. But when I went to convention, Ray Lewis said something that was really, really key on it's good to sell insurance. It's good to sell insurance, but you also got to teach that family about life. You know, so I think you I guys making your first fine. sale, you actually protected a family. If anything were to happen, you actually helped them create a legacy. Um, and we have, we have two people that actually passed their exam. We got Ashley. Congratulations. Can't wait to see you on the leaderboards making this money and protecting these families. We also got Warren. Warren, congratulations if you're on here um, on passing your test. So now with you two. Um, Jamar, that was, sorry, Jamar, that was a mistake. Warren actually had his first sell as well. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Well, Warren, congratulations on making your first sale and you wouldn't have been able to make your first sale if you didn't pass the exam. So congratulations on that, on protecting that family. And then we have a list. This list is growing every single week. And I'm going to start off by saying who had their first hire. So, guys, if you guys were at the convention, they talked about integrity. If you want to hit integrity, if you want to build a big team, make a lot of money doing it and helping a lot of families, you have to build a team. So congratulations to Tariq. You actually got your first hire. I know this isn't going to be your first, well, um, your last hire. So, so continue to um, learning about the business, growing your team, helping your team, and you'll be surprised on how much it excels your business. Also, congratulations to Jean. She got her first hire as well. And we got Demetria, if I pronounced that right, sorry if I didn't. Um, you actually got two hires. So this is just growing every single week. I definitely look forward to seeing a bigger list of people exposing the opportunity because not to compare any other IMOs, but Family First is the only IMO that I know that you're able to, um, to, re to recruit people for free. So you're able to expose this opportunity for free. You're able to give somebody the highest contract in any IMO so with that being said, you can really change someone's life by just exposing this opportunity to them. So don't be shy on exposing the opportunity. If you don't feel like you know everything or you haven't been selling because you have great mentors like Dre, you got great mentors like Kali, Corinne, Steve, Mike File. And these people are great at selling at a high level. These people are great at recruiting at a high level. So with that being said, you don't need to know everything just to expose the opportunity to somebody else. And I actually want to give two minutes um, to Kim. If you're on here, Kim actually hired eight people this week. So Kim, if you can take two minutes just to explain like um, what you did, like what made you just want to go at that higher level by recruiting eight people in one week, you got two minutes. Is Kim on yeah, Andre, Steve, is Kim on the phone? 
All right, go keep going, Jamar. Okay, that's perfect. So, um, so pretty much we are gonna have somebody that's introducing promotions. This lady has built this whole well, not built this whole thing, but she's she's one of the biggest reasons why this team is the way it is, along with Mike File. She's definitely changed my life, changed my perspective on selling insurance, helping a lot of families, helping me grow every single day. If you guys heard her speech at convention, you would know why she works the way she works and helps the people so much. So I just want to give the call away to Kali some bill. Thank you. Great job, Jamar. Congratulations to everybody who had their first hire, their first sale, um, or passed the exam. Congratulations. This is just the beginning, guys. Um, so with that being said, in the month of February, February was, I mean, I'm sorry, the month of January, January was a short week, according to family, a short month, according to Family First Life. And um, even with it being a short month, we still had emotions in the month of uh, I got promoted on week three um, to sales manager, and then on um, during the month, at the end of the month, we had uh, Steve Johnson, better known as Steve Franchise, get promoted to sales manager. Him and his team did fifty one thousand four hundred sixteen dollars in issue paid. Um, the re the the his team is growing so big and so fast is because um, number one, he's leading from the front. And then number two, they, he is recruiting and hiring a lot of people and he's getting a lot of people licensed very quickly. So um, Steve, take about two minutes, tell everybody what you're excited about and then what's your next move here with Family First Life, Steve? How, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, awesome, awesome. Uh, uh, I really appreciate everybody. And I wanna uh, first give it back to God. You know, I magnify my honor God. Um, he's the reason why I'm here and the reason why I woke up this morning. But um, I see the team actually going straight to the top, uh, number one. Uh, when we got involved in this business, uh, before I even say anything about myself, I want to give it back to the leadership. Uh, I know when I first met Frank, I don't speak to Frank that much. But from the times I have spoke to Frank, it's one thing that stays consistent about Frank. And Frank is a man of his word. Like what Frank said, what, Frank said, what he's going to do. He's going to do, and I respect that, being a business owner um, prior before, long before Family First. Um, the second person I want to give it to is uh, Mike Fowler. When I first started, because I've only been in this business for four months, not four years, not a year, nothing like that. Um, sometimes if if Dre and Brennan was in the field, I could call Mike, and Mike would give me a call and never on no emotions, just business and straightforward, and I respect that. Um, next person, two people I want to give it to is my younger cousins, uh, Andre and Brennan. Uh, Brennan gave me a call about this business. Um, during that time in my life, I was really going through a hard time in my life. And Brennan gave me a call. And then I confirmed it up with Andre. And we got it kicking. When I first got involved in this business, it was almost like a draft pick. So when we first started in the business, we already had our own office. So, like, I had to really learn this business very fast. And um, getting involved in this business, the first thing I would tell anybody to do is just, you know, get a team. And since we've been involved in the team, watching the team just grow so much, it's not one person that I could just name because so many people on the team is doing so good. I would just, I would miss somebody. So um, getting involved in the business, just being very, very, having a lot. Uh, Steve, you there? Is that my computer? No, I can't hear me either. Okay. Steve, we lost you. All right. I don't is um Andre, are you on? I know Andre's finishing up in the field. Okay. I think he muted himself. Okay, hold on. No, he's not on mute. You hear just, me? Yeah, Steve, we got like one more minute. We gotta keep moving. Oh, okay. So basically look. I'm looking for the team. We're going straight. We, uh, we're going straight to board member. I told Mike Fallon October, no, in November that we was going to hit a uh, sales meeting, sales sales manager with 50,000 for moms. We will hit board member by September. That's the end. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks so much. Congratulations. What um, you hit when you hit um, sales manager again this month, I'm doing another 50,000 in the month of um, February. What have you thought about what your team name is going to be? Yep. Just what like everybody saw on his shirts, the family. 
Okay, awesome. All right, perfect. Um, I have a quick question. Go ahead. All right, congratulations, Steve. Super proud of you. Um, I noticed that you guys, um, especially you, are getting people licensed quickly and, and pretty much through the pipeline. If I was a if I was a new person coming in, could you could you kind of walk so everybody can hear, kind of walk me through the process in your conversation and how you get the person from being a new person all the way to getting contracted and getting out to do their first sale? Okay, so the biggest thing, like I said, like four months ago. Uh, down in the office, we do hold like a very high standard. Not everybody can actually get on our team. So we just tell people uh, exactly what it is. You only have two weeks to actually, if you want to work with us, you only have two weeks to actually get through class. And people respect that because we're leading from the front and they seeing how things are going. And um, I probably check with them maybe like once or twice. But outside of that, because, and you know, Corinne, this business is so good. You don't have to chase nobody. Uh, we don't chase nobody. They actually come to us and um, we welcome them with big, um, with open arms because we really want to help people. So that's really the system that we have. We do have a real strong standard, but our standard is real high, but we do show a lot of love to our team. It's really important when somebody actually get in. And um, I, Andre started first before I got involved because my mom actually got licensed before me. And I saw how Andre got my mom paid so quickly. And I was like, wow, you know, so once they get licensed, uh, we are throwing them into the. We are throwing them in the field. Uh, they most times are by themselves, but they're not by themselves. We just want to get their checks in their hands right away. Thanks so much, Steve. Mm -hmm. No problem. All right, perfect. All right, so we're gonna move on. I don't. I still think Andre. Um, we'll come back to Andre because we're gonna talk about his promotion to vice president. He's in the field. Um, so we're gonna go on to this guy. Uh, Ryan Abansi, Ryan, are you there? Yeah, I can hear you, Golly. All right, perfect. So, um, Ryan Urbanski, um, is, um, he's been in with Family First Life for a little bit over a year. Um, and, and I learned something by being in the convention. Um, it took him really nine months to, to uh, Hall of Fame. Fame is if you see people posting about HOF Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame is 400,000 in issue pay volume personally for the year, and so that's about 33 well, not about 33 34,000 in issue pay volume personally a month over the year. If you do that on average, so Ryan, um, in 2019 was a police officer. Um, and he never had sold insurance before, came to Family First, hit Hall of Fame. One of the few people from um, one of the few people from um, Frank's entire team to hit Hall of Fame. So Ryan is going to talk about how to hit what he did to hit Hall of Fame. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Ryan, your background, why you decided to get an insurance and um, what you're going to do um, in 2021. You ready, Ryan? I am. Thank you, Kylie, for having me on. Um, I just, I love hopping on these calls. Uh, not only does it get me fired up in the morning, especially on a Saturday, make me work harder, but it's uh, just incredible to be able to hear so many people just going out there, growing together, and just taking that leadership role and helping other agents um, not only grow their team, but go out there and, uh, you know, protect and serve a lot of families. So I want to say thank you, Kylie. I am very honored to be on this call. Um, so, you know, I started in the uh, insurance business part-time. This was back in uh, November of 2019 was my, um, my first month part-time. And kind of what led up to me even getting into the insurance business um, was a injury that I sustained uh, while I was a police officer. Um, so from those of you that do not know, um, give me one second. Um, for those of you that do not, can you still hear me? Yep, loud and clear. All right. For those of you that do not know, um, I was a police officer for seven years. I had a lot of pension benefits, the whole nine yards. Um, but one thing that came, um, made me open my eyes is really anything can happen to anybody, and it doesn't matter who you are. Um, it's just what life throws at you. So I got injured. This was early on in 2019. Uh, tore my shoulder. Um, tried to fight through the injury. I had some medical complications, uh, 
had a blood clot that went into my lungs. I was in pretty bad shape. Uh, it made me open my eyes and realize that, you know, I'm not Superman, um, nor, you know, you know, is the, the career that I chose very sustainable for my family. Um, so Mike Fowle actually introduced me into the business, um, and I just knew that I had to make a change, not only for myself, but for my family in order to be able to provide for them. Um, so I kind of went from about eight grand a month to about three. So I was digging myself out of a hole and I knew I had to just do whatever it takes. And I actually found FFL, um, and joined it because of Mike file. Um, so I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a plan B. And I think when we come into this business and we realize that there is no other option, like we have to make this work and we have a strong why it allows us to, to shorten up that learning curve and just go all in. And that's kind of just what I did was I really plugged in in the very beginning, even part time when I wasn't working my full time job. Even when I was, I was listening to podcast training and I was hopping on calls, uh, which allowed me to, like I said, shorten that learning curve up. So really, I, I think what allowed me to hit Hall of Fame was getting plugged in day one, not making excuses. And my sacrifice was not only time with my family, but it was the amount of sleep that I was getting to make this opportunity work for me. So I think that anybody can hit a Hall of Fame. I don't think I am anything special. Um, I don't, there's, I'm, quite honestly, I'm definitely not the best at selling insurance. Um, I just work hard and I do whatever it takes to, to actually protect families. So if we can find our why in this business, that's a great starting point because if you have something that's bigger than just the money and bigger than yourself, and you won't quit on that why, and you'll just do whatever it takes to, uh, to make sure that why is fulfilled. So transition happened in March, uh, end of March, beginning of April. And when I went all in and when I went full time, I made it a point to make sure that I, I bought enough leads, which my lead flow, I always had more than I needed. So I was running final expense. I was running... Uh, I was running um, all types of different final expense. And I would make sure that I was on the phone and I was the first one in the office on Mondays and Thursdays to be able to book up a minimum of 30 to 36 appointments a week. And I think right there, everybody asked, like, how I hit Hall of Fame, how was I able to do those kind of numbers? If you have enough appointments, $10,000 every week just becomes the norm. So it's, it's just the system that FFL has put in place that says if you have 36 appointments, you're going to sit half of them. And even if you're absolutely terrible, half of the people that you sit with are going to buy. So if you do the numbers, you're looking at anywhere between realistically nine to nine to $11,000 to $11, every week. So the sooner we understand the numbers and we get the lead flow down is the quicker that 10K every, every week happens. And that $33,000 issue paid just becomes like a drop dead number. So very important to get those appointments, phone scripts, you know, it's very important that um, you follow the script. I think so many of us like to deviate from the script on the phone. And that's when we start to get into our own mind because we're not booking appointments. So I think it's very important to follow the script and get better on the phone. And quite honestly, the only way to get better on the phone is just to be on the phone longer um, and just follow the system. So I kind of learned that early on that I was in the office some days for 10 to 12 hours. I did whatever it, I had to to make sure I had full days. Uh, because if I don't have appointments, that means that I didn't hit my goals. And if I didn't hit my goals, that means I pretty much did not fulfill my why that week. So I think that's very important. Uh, mindset. I'm going to talk about that. I think mindset is um, the, not really the downfall, but probably the biggest challenges that we have in this business is, you know, we fall short maybe on our dial session, and then we say, well, you know, I'm going to go grab something to eat, or hey, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and 
we just kind of give up on ourselves and say, hey, we'll just have a better day tomorrow. Well, that's kind of a bad mindset to have because, you know, what happens if tomorrow never comes? What happens if you don't make the most out of today? When you don't have enough appointments, even if you gave it 100% of your effort on the phones, your job should be, hey, in between appointments, I'm hopping back on the phones and booking same-day appointments, or, hey, I've got a list of leads that I wasn't able to contact. I'm going to go do some door knocks. you got to keep your activity high because if you keep your activity high, you're, just, you're giving yourself more opportunities to succeed. So I think that is uh, something that, you know, is a great uh, setup to make sure you can hit a Hall of Fame. And when you're having a bad day, it, you know, we all have, you know, character building days like Thaddeus always says. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. But when we have the amount of appointments, it doesn't matter if you had a bad day because it's always going to come back around tenfold when we just simply run the numbers. So the sooner that we understand that is actually just the better that life gets and the easier that it becomes. So I think a lot of people said this in the business. It's simple. We buy leads. We stay on the phones until our appointments are booked. We run the appointments. And we just help families. It's, it's very simple. It's not easy because it's, it's a lot of hard work. You know, and I, I work anywhere minimally between probably 60 to 70 plus hours every week. But I know deep down if I hit Hall of Fame or I hit that, that, that mark where I, I kind of set my goals to, building becomes a lot easier because the more money that you have, the more that you can dump into your agents. And I just see that with Kali, Corinne, um, and I see with so many other agents on this team that we're able to do a lot more because if we're issuing a lot more, then we're able to help other agents. We're able to start expanding our business. So, um, Kali, I don't know if there's really anything else you want me to touch on. Um, no, I mean, that's good, Ryan. Ryan. Um, I do. So I do have a question. How many, well, no, let me ask you this. What would you tell somebody who is, um, brand new because hall of fame sounds probably intimidating to a lot of people Four hundred thousand a year thirty three thousand um you know a month right so somebody brand new what would be the best advice that you would give somebody brand brand new that they need to do if they want to have success here or you know even minimal success what would you what would your advice be so i think the uh that's actually a great question so i i think that number one we have to understand what leads we're running. I think a lot of us are running these uh, internet leads. And I think the sooner that we understand the numbers and how many leads we need, whether we're dialing a day, running a, running a day, and if that, that's fine as well. If we dial Monday for Tuesday, Wednesday for Thursday, and Friday for Saturday, and or Sunday, um, you should be running no less than 10 to 12 appointments a day. If you're running 10 to 12 appointments a day, um, you're going to need to buy at least 100 internet leads. You buy 100, at least 100 internet leads, you should be booking anywhere between 10 to 12 appointments, minimum. I think that's a, a good start. And understanding that you got to spend money to make it. I, don't, I, I think the quicker that we understand that, because if you spend, Kylie, if you spend $600 in a dial session, right, and you book 10 mm -hmm. to 12 appointments and you make three or, or just say $3,000 in a day. Mm-hmm. You have literally, you did more than quadruple your investment. So then you take what you had, you put a, a little bit aside for your, for your bills, and then dump it back in and buy more leads, right? Buying leads should be like putting gas in your, your car because if you run out of gas, then you're stuck. So definitely invest in leads. Um, and understand, hopping on these live dials, this has helped me uh, and a lot of people um, that I know, hopping on dials. Don't be afraid to be critiqued because when we're critiqued, constructive criticism is actually good because I may be saying something that I'm subconsciously not aware of that may be a reason why I'm not able to book any appointments. But Kylie may be like, hey, Ryan, try this. Or, hey, do everything except, hey, 
you know, if it's not too much, if you had to squeeze me in for 10 to 15 minutes, no, I'm here to do, I'm here to get you the information. Right. But we all got to learn from each other and follow the system. So buy leads, stay on the phones until we have our 10 to, 10 to 12 appointments. If we're doing dial a day, run a day, keep a positive mindset. Because if we, if we're negative all the time, then our, the clients that we sit with and are talk to over the phone can sense it. And nobody wants to sit with, uh, you know, Scrooge, you know, just because they don't want that kind of energy in their home. Right. And just go to work. Good stuff, Ryan. Like that, that really is the basics. <laughs> um, um, does anybody else, we got a couple more, we got time for probably about two more questions. Anybody else have any questions for Ryan? Andre, Corinne, Steve. How to get, the, we got a Hall of Fame producer on the call. Anybody? Yeah, I got a question. Thank you. Hey, Ryan, uh, thank you for taking the time out to get on the call and bless us with uh, you know, all your greatness. Uh, so my question to you is, what, would, what do you think your biggest hurdle is because uh, I know you didn't, you've never sold insurance before, but you've been here for a little over a year. What was your biggest hurdle in, uh, in, in the business and how did you overcome it? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest hurdle, and I think a lot of, um, you know, because I'm starting to grow a team as well. I, I think that we, we have this, um, you know, subconscious idea that we, we have to know everything about insurance and, um, you know, product knowledge and, you know, we're in the home and we're by ourselves. We're really not by ourselves. And I think what kind of took me to the next level was getting over my ego, right? Because I don't really care what people think of me inside the home. My job is to put them in a better position. So I would always call from inside the home. And I realized that the more appointments that I ran and the more phone calls that I made to my upline, um, it helped me learn product knowledge and and help me put them in a better position. Um, so basically stepping outside of your element, realizing that, hey, there's a lot of people on this, on this call, myself included, that you can pick up the phone and call. Um, and just realizing that you got to reach out. The support, we have such a huge support here. Fury, High Voltage, Dream Team, all of these other, you know, Honor and Valor, you know, Allegiance, National, everybody wants to win. And we're only a phone call away. So simply picking up the phone, getting a second, you know, a second opinion and putting that client in a better position is going to help you with two things. It's going to give you more learning experience and it's going to help you protect more families. Good stuff, Ryan. <clears throat> Ryan, thank you so much for taking your time. We know your time is super valuable. Um, thank you for taking the time out to speak um, on this morning and um, go out there and crush it. And let's hit, hit Hall of Fame in 2021, all right? Thank you, Kylie. I appreciate you hopping on or uh, having me on this call. And uh, I just, I, I really appreciate it. You guys are absolutely crushing it. I'm so excited to see, you know, where 20, the end of 2021 brings us all. So I appreciate it. All right, perfect. All right, so the next up, we're going to bring up this guy. Uh, Andre, you're on the call, right? You're here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, so this is super exciting because at the convention, I talked about coming over to family first and back in December 20, no, 2019, it was just me and one guy and we did 8,000 in premium <laughs> issue paid in um, December of 2019. And then him and his team in January of 20, uh, 2021, one year, um, did 151000 over $151,000 in issue pay volume. Um, and he's, you know, been along the way, has had several other promotions on his team. Um, and so, Andre, this is super exciting for me because it was just me and the one guy. And now it's you, it's a lot of us. Um, so take, um, take a little bit of time, Andre. Talk to everybody about what you're excited about and then where you guys are going and what's next. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, great job, Ryan. Uh, appreciate you, bro, everything that you bring. You know, you're talking about getting the Hall of Fame. You did it in your first year. 
that was a really, really big deal, you know, to see you on stage and everything at the convention. Super proud of you. Um, appreciate the opportunity. Um, so I'm going to just talk about, you know, us hitting, you know, us hitting uh, Vice President doing this amount of production. It really was a team effort. You know, I look at, you know, um, Steve or, you know, the family, what he's going to name his team, he'll get his logo. Um, he hit Step Manager in, in January. You know, Corinne and High Voltage, they hit Sales Manager in January. So it was just kind of like through osmosis that we were going to get it. It wasn't me, you know, in particular. It was we have a great team. And as they were, I was, we were more focused on them getting their promotions than, you know, us, than me trying to get, you know, mine. And just through osmosis, it just kind of happened that way. Can you all hear me? Yeah, somebody had their phone on mute. It's good. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So um, just through osmosis, we kind of got there. But as far as where I see us going now, we have a lot of people that are coming up, you know, from, from Jamar looking to get his promotion, Jamal, Jarrell that are, you know, down there, they're looking to get their promotion to Waisha. You know, she's hiring people. She's hiring like 10. So you got a marker who's bringing on show up at the, we're expecting a huge, huge explosion. Where we're going is board member. Um, that's the number one thing that, you know, we're focused on is getting an integrity deal and getting, getting to board member. Um, that's our number one focus. That's the only thing that we're going to talk about. That's the only thing that we're really focused on. So it starts with definitely buying leads, running the appointments. You know, it's the thing that Ryan talked about. Those to me are kind of like the no brainer, um, you know, buying leads, calling leads, like you said, keeping your activity high. But then also, too, you better make sure that you got some people. Um, you, you know, it's great for you to go out there and do it by yourself. I was, uh, it's funny. So we're at the convention, and uh, one of the speakers is up, and he did a nice amount of volume. I'm talking about, like, personally, last year, he did a lot of volume. But then we went and looked at his team numbers, and his team numbers were just not there. And so it's great. But like I always talk about, you know, you, you, my message has been very consistent since day one, like you said, you know, me, me, just me and you, Somerville, I told you when I talked to Frank, we came here to build something. So that's something that we, and I, and I meant that when I said it. And so eventually you're going to get tired. Like it's raining right now outside. Not that it's bad. I just came from an appointment. I love being able to help families. But at the end of the day, I came here for freedom. So that's what we're focused on. That's the vision that we're going to is just getting the freedom. And anybody can do this. So we're focused on, you know, Corinne, she's going to get her, her vice president promotion. I'm talking to Steve. He's going to get his vice president promotion. And we're just focused on people just getting hitting the sales manager. That's the number one goal, just hitting the sales manager. And as you get, once you get there, your whole job is to help other people get there. And that's really been the blueprint that we, you know, that we follow. La Kenya, she's done a terrific job. So we just have a great, great team. Um, God has been good. He's continued to keep blessing. And so that's pretty much it is all I got to say about the promotion. All right, Dre, real quick. Um, this year, so this was your first convention with Family First, right? Yeah. Um, so can you talk really quickly about, number one, why it was important to be there and why it's important to be um, at the next uh, big event? Yeah, so, I mean, we only have one convention a year. So, like, there is no, like, next. You know what I mean? Like, that's the biggest event that the company holds. And you don't get a chance to learn from the, I mean, you got Mark Mead. I don't think people really understood. Like, Mark Mead is stone cold wealthy. Like, he has an integrity deal. It's, it's a done deal at this point, you know. So you get a chance to be around these top people, people that are, you know, doing four, or five, six hundred thousand dollars on their own pen. People that have built massive agencies. You got a chance to meet, you know, like Sean Mike was actually at our event. You got a chance to meet the CEO of the company. And so, you know, it was important for you not to only get that, you know, Corinne, Steve, they really, you know, really talked about it a lot. It's also important for how many people you're going to get there. Because it's great for you to learn it, but it's better if you have other people with you learning it as well. And so it's really critical. Anytime they have an event, you have to make sure that you're there because you're going to, you're going to fast forward your business six, seven months. Corinne always talked about it leading up to the convention. You get a chance to fast forward your business by six or seven months in three days. I don't know anybody, no bi any business owner that would not take that amount of production. So you got to make sure that you get to the event. And like I said, I think we already had one of the bigger presidents, you know, uh, presidents there um, with 45 plus people in one event doing COVID. So it just, you know, it spoke to the, it spoke to the commitment of the team. It spoke to the leadership that we have on the team as far as being able to, you know, lead by example and really 
also to help inspire people and let them know that they can get their dreams as well. But it's critical, it's criti critical that they get to convention. If you didn't get to convention, I'm gonna be honest with you. I told the team, if you didn't, if you didn't come to convention, don't call me, cause I have nothing to say to you. Because everything, any problem, anything you had going on, any challenges, any all the all, everything that you had going on, somebody at convention went through it, and they told you exactly how they got over. It wasn't like it wasn't a rah rah fest. They didn't get up there talking about. They walked three ways, three miles in the snow. It was it was. This is what we do. This is how we do it, and this is more importantly why we do it. It was very, very, very much so nuts and bolts. And so, if you didn't make it, I just told the team like you know people on the team. If you didn't make it, no knock. I'm not mad at you, but we just we just not on the same you know the same page. And so that's okay. But the convention was. Saying everybody that's come from the convention has either hired some people. Like just in this week, we've had 20 people get hired. And I know that that was a direct reflection of the convention. People came and got a chance to really see. They hear me. They hear Kylie. They hear Steve. They hear Corinne. They hear Ryan. But to go to a bigger event and get a chance to meet Mark Me and get a chance to talk to, you know, uh, some of these other great leaders, Jonathan Persina. Some of these other people, you get the chance to look and say, man, if they can do it, I know I can do it. And they're telling you exactly how they did it. So it's critical that you get always get to the next event. All right. Thank you, Andre. Super proud of you. Um, next stop, what next stop is uh, senior vice president. Yep. All right, perfect. All right, awesome. Thank you, Andre. All right. So with that being said, we are going to go into this is a perfect sense. We're going to go into, um, Corinne's going to talk about getting plugged in and why being plugged in is so important. Corinne, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. And Dre, thanks for, uh, you know, blessing us with your word and congratulations on your, your promotion for you and Steve. That's exciting. Um, guys, I'm going to go straight into it um, on why it's important to stay, stay and be plugged in. Um, and if you notice, you know, you don't want to fix you don't want to fix something that's already working. It's not broken. So it, everybody that has either spoke on this call or that is on this call listening, um, most of everybody was at the event. And so with staying plugged in, I look at it like when you're going to charge your phone, the only way it's going to work and for you to use it and for it to turn on if, if, it's, if it's, it's plugged in. And so you got to do the same thing with not only your mind, but also yourself when it comes to this business. And just like Andre said, there's no way us leaders can really help you if you're not showing up to an event or being plugged in into this meeting, because this is how you learn. This is part of the pipeline and how you learn this business, but also how you get your people plugged in if you're building the agency. So, you know, you don't want to tell somebody to plug in and then you're not showing up or plugging in because people do half of what you do. And if you don't do anything, people don't do anything. If you do half of anything, they still do nothing. So it's our job as leaders to stay plugged in. We don't know it all. We don't have it figured out. And if you stop growing, you obviously die. We know that. And so I look at it like, hey, if, you know, like Andre said, Mark Mead is super wealthy. A lot of the people that walked across that stage or up there are super wealthy. Here's the thing. You don't see them not showing up at an event because they're wealthy. So if they're still plugged in, we should be too. If we want our pockets to look like theirs, we have to do what they're doing so we can have the success they're having. So you got to do the things that you don't like doing now so that you can have the things that you do like having later. You can either play now and suffer later or do the things that you need to do now so that you can play later and you can do anything that you want and live out your dream. Whatever your goals might be on the reason why you came here, but you got to put the work in. And so the first thing, guys, and definitely write this information down, is being plugged in um, allows you to keep tab on the process of your business um, and activities, organizations, performance to reach your personal goals, team of goals and objectives. Um, and it also allows you to stay up to date on the direction that the company is going in, discuss different ideas that you can actually use for your business. I know, um, and I can, this is safe to say that everybody went to the event, you probably picked up something that you learned that you can use to tweak your business to take it to Correct. the next level. Yeah. Corinne, you, Corinne, you're fading like in and out some. I'm on my laptop, so I don't know. Okay. Can you hear me now? That's better. Okay. That's better. Um, it, it also it also helps you solve any personal problems that you're having in your business if you, you're not sure what to do or how to go about doing it. 
not only can you hear what you need to change your business, you actually have access to the people who are having success where you can actually go up to them and have a personal conversation to figure out what you're doing wrong so that you you can help yourself in your business. So like, for example, I want to take my business to the next level. So I set up a lunch with some of my teammates and Kristen, and Kristen was able to really show me and tell me some of the things that she was doing that helped me. Um, And then, um, you know, when you go there, you know, sometimes because we're so independent, when you're, when you're out there and you're not having the success that you want to have, it almost sometimes feels like you're alone and maybe you're going through it on your own. And so going to these events or staying plugged into these meetings, you get to hear the challenges that people have overcome so that any one of those challenges that they may mention, you can relate to so that you know that you're on track to having the success that you're having. And guys, I do, I just want to say something because you know, sometimes people get frustrated in business. Sometimes people get overwhelmed, but understand something. Again, it all starts with your mind. Like a lot of the leaders, Ryan and Andre, a lot of leaders said on this call, you know, I think about our mind and our lifestyle like a battery. Uh, you know, not everything is going to be perfect and be open to making mistakes because a battery doesn't work unless it's charged with a positive and a negative. You know, you can't have a great story or a great lifestyle without opposition and through destruction comes structure. So if you're right now, if you're going through a hard time, if you feel like, you know, you can't get out, if you feel like you don't understand why it's not working for you and you feel like you're doing all the right things, keep going, keep showing up, keep staying plugged in because that's how you get yourself out. So you you can relate to people who are already having success and some things that you've probably been going through. Um, And you can ask questions to help yourself get out. Um, also understand too that plugging into meetings and these calls, this is, you know, this kind of makes you, helps you to understand how predictable your business can be. You know, when when your team and, and yourself is showing up on the call, you can know that, all right, you know who your players are, and you know, you know the people that are showing up. And ultimately the people that are showing up are usually the people that are producing because they're getting the blueprint that they need to go run the play in the field. Um, so yeah, so the people who are plugged in, the people that are showing up, not only just yourself, but also for your team, these are the people that are really are just, are just closing and understand this too, guys, uh, you can't beat a dead horse. And so I know a lot of people on this call have maybe recruited some people, hired some people. They may have even showed up to an event, understand that everybody in your business is not going to do the business, but the the people that show up, that get it done, you know, you just got to keep inviting and you got to keep recruiting, but uh, Getting people plugged into the uh, to the meetings and the calls, it makes your job so much easier because you're not trying to personally convince each person that you're hiring or that your teammates are hiring that Family First Life works. They know it works because they're plugged in uh, to Family First Life, our meetings, our you know our conference calls, um, you know convention. Uh, so it just makes your job easier where all you got to do is plug them into a system, invite them to a call and let family first life work for you. So you got to ask yourself a question at the end of the day. Are you working hard for family first life or is family first life working hard for you? And by working smarter is by rallying a bunch of people to an event or a meeting like this, because every event, your net, every event is the next big event. And we consider these Saturday trainings an event. How many people can you get on here? Because it, it, it's all the numbers. The more you have, the more people on this call you have, the more people that are going to play, the, the bigger your numbers are going to be. Um, and so, again, you can't be a prophet on, in your own land. You know, if your team is, if, if they're just, if you're constantly telling them what to do or telling them, you know, how the business works and they're not hearing you, plug them into these calls. Sometimes people need to hear somebody other than yourself in order to get the message and understand this too. Even though you're saying the same thing to the same person multiple times, it takes 15 to 20 times before a person really actually hears it. And I can relate that to me when I first came in this business. I wasn't the sharpest tool. Kylie and I kind of, you know, got into it a lot because I had to remove my ego and my pride. I knew I came from an insurance company, but guess what? This is a different company. We work completely different here. So I had to adapt the way that things were done here so that I could have the success that Kali is having. And, and through that was plugging in, but also plugging into her. Even when even when I was at the appointment, 
Holly can tell you, I had a hard time giving her a phone call with that appointment. I would leave the appointment when I could have called her and she could have helped me close. And that was something too I also had to learn. That's also a part of being plugged in is making sure you stick as close to your leaders as possible. Even when before you're about to leave an appointment, if you don't close, make sure you call your manager because our job is to help you not only to be the example, but to offer an opportunity and show you how to get paid. And part of that is being accessible to you when you need help in the field or whatever it is in this business. But as long as you're plugging in, like Andre said, we can help you. If you're not plugged in, we can't because you should have been on the call. You should have been at the meeting. You should have been plugged in. Um, what else do I have for you guys? Um, I, I said, you know who your leaders are. And also, guys, the last thing, too, is you get recharged. Uh, you know, even myself as a leader, sometimes, you know, when we're running hard and, you know, we're moving and we may not be having the success that we want to have, uh, going to these meetings just confirms that we're on the right path and we're doing the right thing. Um, you're not alone. Um, and again, that's this is why most companies and most businesses have team meetings. They have gatherings. Uh, you know, if you're a drug addict and you're trying to get clean, this is why AA meetings are important because you don't feel alone. You're not by yourself. At, listen, we all have a story. We all are going through some things. But the question is how you react to the things that you're going through. And the winners, the people that have success, those are the ones that are running through the fire. They're running through the cold. They're not standing on the cold getting burnt and getting hot. They're going and getting it done despite anything that they're going through. And I think that's one of the major keys to being successful. Um, and th guys, that's the reason why you should be and stay plugged in. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Other than that, I'm gonna turn it back over to the awesome colleague. All right, I'm going and I'm gonna post um, uh, right now. Thank you, Corinne, so much for going through that. Um, I'm gonna post where different meetings, the different calls, not yeah, calls that are available to us on a weekly basis. I'll post this in GroupMe as well, just so if you need a copy, you have a copy available to you. Um, but this is you, the same thing every week, guys. And here's the thing about Family First Life: I know, um, you know, a lot of us has come from another company where, um, you know, <laughs> we were expected to be at certain places, and if you weren't. Someone, someone was calling you to find out why you weren't there. Um, that is not the case here. So because that's not the case here, you, you, you know, we put the information out there. And as Corinne said, if you want to win or you want to really have you know, massive success here, you know, you want to follow the people that are doing what you want, you, you, doing what you, um, oh my gosh, I'm so tongue tied. <laughs> you want to follow the people that are already that have already done what you want to get done. So um, we have live dials, guys, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It does not fail, no matter what. Um, the only time that we missed live dials is because we were at the convention last week. But every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have um, live appointment setting, live dials. Um, every Monday at noon is a sales call with Frank Euphemia. And so this call is a lot of good information on this call, but you know, there's levels to everything. So the team sales call, the team sales call on Monday and it's 30 minutes long guys, you want to jump on there because Frank has a lot of the, the high producing people on the call and talking about exactly what they're doing. So if you want to take your business to the next level, Mondays are important. Um, 10 AM on Thursday is appointment setting call. So listen to let I when I, guys when I first started there was no live dials, and so I was on appointment setting call every Thursday. Um, but even now, every once in a while, I still get on appointment setting call because there may be something that I'm missing, or I might feel like I'm not doing as well setting appointments, and I need to hear another voice telling me what to do about how to set appointments. Um, 11 a.m. on Thursday is the advanced market sales. And so that's important for people that want to understand how to sell IULs, how to sell um, annuities. Advanced market sales is on Facebook Live at 11 a.m. on Thursday. And a lot of people have learned just from watching that how to get how to get in the home, how to what questions to ask, how to, you know, what how to explain annuities to people, how to explain IULs. So you know, that's another great call. And then Friday at 11 a.m. is the next level call. And that's generally 
the president of the company introduce, introducing someone just on the highest level. Um, you know, Ryan Urbanski was talking about he did 400000 in premium um, last year as she paid volume personally. Um, but then they had people that are that have done more than that. The person in the company that had the most issue paid volume um, was a guy named Steve Giordano, and he personally issue paid 1.3 million. So he, on a monthly basis, he is writing a hundred thousand. Not writing, he's issuing a hundred thousand in premium a month on average. So, um, guys, the and then of course we have this Saturday call here um, just for our our specific team this Saturday call from 11 to 12 guys. So if you want to get connected, if you want to know what's going on, if you want to feel like you're in the loop, get to connect, get connected to the things that other people are connected to so that you can grow and you can grow your business. Uh, with that being said, guys, it, you know, have a great week. And again, I will post this in group me. The recording of the call will also be in group me. Um, have a great one. Let's go.